Good morning. Hi, everybody. It's Monday morning. Good to see you. How is everybody? Good morning. All right, let's get this party started. I'm Anna Gibbs. It's Monday morning, so this is your mojo. And I'm excited to be with you here again, as I am every week. It's always good to see you guys. Um, so I want to... Sorry, I think we lost audio there for a minute. So if you're if you're joining me here on Zoom, thank you for being here. For all of you who are watching through the Facebook group, I just want to say thanks again for uh, being a part of this community. This is such a great thing that we get together every Monday morning and just talk about things that can help us start our week off strong, that can give us perspective, that can stretch our thinking that can help us lead a bigger life and a more successful life, whatever that means to you, right? Because success is fluid and success means something different for all of us. Um, my goal as a coach, as a business leader is to impact the lives of other people. That's something that I discovered a long time ago was my mission and purpose in life was to really be a partner uh, to people to help them to discover things about themselves that maybe they're not connecting with or that they overlook or they tend to minimize in their own thoughts and help you to really get clear about your strengths and get clear about what you want out of life and out of business and career and, and to help you come up with a plan to get there faster, easier, and more profitably or more profoundly than you would if you were on your own. So that's what I'm here to do. Thanks for letting me be your coach. So if you're with me, give me a shout out, say good morning. Unless you're listening to this while you're driving, then just focus on that. <laughs> All right, so this morning I wanna to talk to you about going from good to great, going from good to great. And um, so, that is really about understanding how to take some inventory of, of where we are in our lives and what we're doing, but more importantly, how we're feeling about it and asking ourselves if we are operating in a, a sense of being, you know, average, ordinary, or are we looking for the extraordinary? Are we looking to break through to new levels of performance? And, you know, the enemy of good is not bad. The enemy, I'm sorry, the enemy of great is not bad. It is good because that's where we tend to stay sometimes. We, we tend to say things like, I'm really good or I'm fine, right? And yet when we say those things, what is that really implying? And sometimes we have to take a step back and look at ourselves and, and look at what we're thinking and examine that, right? Because do you want to be fine or do you want to be phenomenal? Do you want to be good or do you want to be great? And so this is an opportunity to level up and it's an opportunity to just look at our own thoughts and actions and see where it's taking us. Right. And please don't don't mistake this for uh, me trying to say that whatever you're doing is not enough. Right. Because I want you to find that space between knowing that you are enough and what you're doing may be enough and yet looking at results. That's what we're talking about. This is not about defining who you are. It's about looking at your actions in whatever area of your life and what are those results? Are you getting good results or are you getting great results? Could we look at that and say, okay, if I applied a little bit more purpose, a little bit more focus, if I was able to get a little bit more support with the help of a coach, a mentor, a business leader, whoever, to help me apply more strategy, to help me look at systems and models, could I see myself going to another level and getting bigger results? That's what this conversation is about, right? It's not about examining our self-worth. It's about examining what our actions are and if our actions are bringing really the results that will move us forward toward our goal faster, okay? And why is this important? Well, I think because the world has a lot of average in it and the world has a lot of people who get stuck in mediocrity. And I try to fight that as a coach every day. 
I look to find the people who are motivated, who want to move forward out of being average, out of being stuck. And it doesn't mean that you have all the answers right away, right? But it means that you may have this little sense of restlessness, this little sense of I could do something different or I could do something at a different level or I could apply fill in the blank and get different results. That's what I'm talking about. So if you have any thoughts or questions, throw them at me. I've got to uh, make sure that I can see you guys on Facebook. And, you know, if I'm resonating with you, let me know too, right? Because this isn't just, it's an opportunity. The conversation we're having this morning is an opportunity to see if this is something that you need to put attention to, right? Are we operating within a capacity of being very average or can we move to a capacity of being extraordinary? And honestly, the, the shift from being um, average to extraordinary can be very small. It doesn't require a lot. It just requires focus in the right area, right? So right now I want you to think about an area of your life, whether it be your career, your business, relationships, your wealth, your health, whatever it is, and, and ask yourself if I'm focused on doing things in a way that is extraordinary so that I can be great, or am I doing things to uh, create some homeostasis and just be sort of in that, that good area, that fine area, I'm fine, right? So where could you apply a little bit more effort and move to another level? And what would that effort look like in this particular area of your life? Is it applying some type of system? And it may be a system that you create or maybe someone else's system that you need to implement, which means that it could uh, require some education, some learning, some reading. Um, is it something that you need to uh, look at in terms of some support like coaching, mentoring, training, uh, reading a book, going to a class, right? Is it about getting clearer on your goal? Is it about creating better habits? So what will move you from being good to being great? And there are a lot of um, great authors who have talked about this and written this uh, over the years. One that sticks out the first time I really heard this many years ago is Jim Rohn. And Jim Rohn always said the enemy of great is good, right? Because we can stay in this good place and convince ourselves that that in itself is, is enough. And then we don't strive to get to higher levels of achievement or performance um, or satisfaction either because we convince ourselves that we're doing just fine. I mean, let's face it, when you ask your partner if everything's okay and they say, I'm fine, you probably say, uh-oh. <laughs> So we want to look at how can we how can we create more energy around the things that we want, the things that we say we truly want. So what is that area for you? That's my message for you this morning. My core message for you is that the enemy of great is good, convincing ourselves that what we're doing is uh, enough or okay. And, and look, compared to a lot of people, it probably is, but we're not comparing ourselves to other people, are we? No, we are looking at what we want to achieve and how we can continue to strive to outperform ourselves year over year, month over month, right? So what are the things that you really want most? What are the uh, results that you're looking for? And how can you move the needle and go from being good or fine to being great and extraordinary, right? So Slightly going to shift the topic on that, but it's uh, relative to the fact that one of the things I realized that I want to move from good to great on uh, is my own knowledge around wealth building. And that's been a big conversation around me for the last couple of months. I'm fortunate uh, to be in a company uh, like Keller Williams uh, that we talk about that all the time. And we, uh, you know, my business partner, Rosemary, is, is a great mentor to me on that. And, and look, I've been very fortunate now to uh, start some businesses in the last year or two um, and have ownership in, in several of our Keller Williams businesses. <clears throat> so as a business leader and business owner, I know I'm creating opportunity, but I know that in order to really create generational wealth for my family. My husband and I have to do things together differently. Um, 
And so I've been spending a lot more time trying to understand different concepts that impact wealth building and really looking to increase my financial literacy, basically. And so this is a topic that I don't know if we talk about ever here on Mojo. And uh, I will put out my disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor by any means, but I do know that for many of us, that this is something that we should put more attention to, right? So when we do our wheel of life exercise, uh, and again, if any of you would like to learn more about what I'm talking about, send me a note, or you can go to our Facebook page, Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs. In the file section, there is the wheel of life assessment. Uh, and basically the wheel represents your whole life and it's separated into segments. And one of those segments is wealth or finances. And you're always gonna find that on a wheel of life because it is a big important part of our life. And money is good for the good it can do. So this is about us getting really connected to and in a relationship with money, right? Because we're talking about um, building businesses here on Mojo. We're talking about leading an extraordinary life. We really can't leave out this subject because what are we working for? And we know that in the world we live in, money, right, is what allows us to experience things, to help other people, to invest in businesses, to invest in our children, our grandchildren, to do things and, and, and really, you know, have the life that we choose. So, you know, it's funny because I know people get weird about money. And I don't know about you, but in the very traditional Italian household I grew up in, we didn't talk about money. Um, so I had to learn more about this in, in my adult years. And as I grew as an entrepreneur, uh, I had to seek the advice and counsel of other people who have built wealth and other people, uh, you know, who have made great decisions around money, uh, many of who, um, you know, some of which I've had the pleasure of talking to many of who I've read books and, and listened to podcasts and gone on workshops and things like that. So I just wanted to bring this up for you this morning because are you putting that in your sights? Are you focused on, you know, looking at if you're an entrepreneur right now and you're working really hard to build your business or take your business to another level, obviously there's numbers attached to that, right? And those numbers represent freedom and opportunity, right? So it, within your business, those numbers first and foremost represent opportunity for your business. And so um, as a business coach, this is something I get into conversations with a lot with, with my clients is, you know, as you're earning revenue and your business is, is being uh, successful and you're earning revenue, what are you doing with that money, right? So you have to understand the economic model of your own business so that you can create a budget and you can make sure that you're taking care of your business's needs, as well as future opportunity that you may want to invest in, like marketing and, and different things that will move your business forward, like consulting, coaching, what have you. And then there is a portion of that that might be for, for you, uh, but then that is an opportunity now for you in your personal life to look at what does that money get to do for you, right? So I think that we have to be honest that money is is a it is a priority, right? And because money is good for the good that it can do. So right now, whether you work for a company or whether you are an entrepreneur, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions around this for you to think about it, for you to journal it, meditate on it, maybe use it as a springboard to do your own learning research, what have you. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first question I'm going to ask you is what is your relationship with money? Which I don't know if anyone's ever asked you that before, but really, if you could get into a, a little uh, narrative about this, what is your relationship with money? Because you have to have a positive relationship with money if you want it to stay with you. <laughs> it's just like any other partnership or relationship. If you don't have a good relationship with money, it's not going to stick around. So you have to have a healthy way of looking at money and what money can do for you and others and, and for your world, right? And so uh, Jill just put on the chat here on Facebook, myths of money. Yeah, you have to bust through, very good, Jill. You have to bust through the myth around money that you carry in your own head, right? Because many of us carry limiting beliefs around money, right? And, and sometimes it's programmed into us from when we're young. And so this really is about going from good to great, 
Because if you say things like, um, I don't know, money only goes to money, or uh, I've, I've erased so many of these things from my mind, I can't even think of them, but you know, oh, money is the root of all evil, which actually is not what the Bible says. It's the worship of money that is the root of all evil. Um, so it is about really getting clear on this relationship you have with money, right? It's got to be healthy and it's got to be where you feel energetically that you are in a state of abundance because when you, I mean, this is really a core part of just attracting positivity and opportunity to you in general. If you can always believe that you are in a state of abundance, right? That the cup is not half empty, but it's half full that there's always enough business to go around, that there's always enough opportunity, that there's an abundance of customers, clients, listings, leads, whatever, that you will always be able to attract what you need and more. Be in that state of abundance. That's the energy you want to have around money. You want to have this, this belief that you can attract money, right? I'm a money magnet. I can attract money, which is another word for opportunity. And yeah, we're going there today because I wanted to give you an opportunity to examine this. And I wanted to give you an opportunity to examine your goals around money. And, and you know, it's great to say I want to earn $100,000 in my business or $500,000 in my business or a million dollars in my business. That's great. Why? Why is that important to you? What is significant about that number? And what will you do with it, right? So in working with my clients, I help them exactly dissect that number. And, and we, we look at where is all that money going to go? What is the purpose and use of it? One of those uses, I hope, is for it to create more money <laughs> so that you're not just spending your money, you're investing your money in things that will produce more opportunity for you later or for your children or grandchildren. Um, and so there are so many great books. There are so many uh, people that you could follow. If you have questions about who I'm following, who I'm listening to, certainly reach out to me. I can tell you, I do listen to Gary Keller. He is the founder of uh, Keller Williams, but he's really an economist. He's really just such a smart businessman. And he has done a lot now to create uh, space around this conversation in our company. Uh, if you're interested, you can download his podcast, um, Think Like a CEO, uh, and uh, that that you know you can learn from people who have succeeded. And just like anything else, you have to trust the source, right? So I look at who is the person, not just what they've accomplished, but who do they what do they stand for. What are their values, right? So, so when I look to follow people or or use them as a mentor or guide, you know, I really am looking at, at what are the factors that make this person uh, someone that I want to listen to. Uh, currently, what I'm working through, uh, this is on my personal growth plan right now. Uh, if you can see that, Smart Women Finish Rich, Smart Women Finish Rich by David Bach. David has several books. Um, I believe that he is someone that uh, knows what he's talking about. I believe that he is someone that lives uh, by a code of ethics and values. And uh, he has another book, Smart Couples Finish Rich. But look, it doesn't matter for all my gentlemen uh, in, in our Mojo group. Just, just don't worry about the term women, okay? It's smart people finish rich for sure. And what I like about this book is he breaks down different strategies around money. Uh, protecting money, saving money, investing money. Uh, he talks about what could be a good strategy, gives you options, educates you. Uh, and that's really what this is about, is creating an opportunity for you to develop financial literacy, right? Because as I said before, when you have a good relationship with money, it's going to want to hang out with you. It's going to want to stay with you, just like any other relationship. If you treat someone poorly, they're not going to want to stay with you. They're not going to want to hang out with you. And, you know, the other term that we use for money is currency, right? Because money is energy. Money is energy. So we have to connect with that energy and know that there is abundance of it out there and that you have to focus on how to create a flow of energy where money comes into your world. Now, how do we do that? We do that through our actions. We do that first and foremost through our thoughts. 
And actually before our thoughts, we have to look at our belief system, which is why I'm saying, I want you to examine what are the myths that you have? What are the truths that you have? The thoughts that you have around money, because that's creating a belief system around the subject, which then shapes your thinking and our thoughts become our actions and our words. And so those actions are either creating abundant opportunity to increase your business, to increase your wealth, to increase opportunity, or it's creating a, a lid and it's keeping you boxed in somewhere that is limiting you from getting to another level of success or abundance, right? So we want to examine our belief systems. This, this goes to anything, right? What do you hold as a truth? Is it really true? Is it really the, the highest level of thinking? Or is there a way that you could shift your belief system? And how you do that is up to you, right? You, some of you may need to really think about it. Some of you may need to take in other information or evidence uh, or a little bit of both. And for you to be able to then say, okay, so perhaps my, my belief on this could change or it could be different. And so when we change our beliefs, we change our thoughts. When we change our thoughts, we change the way we do things. And it's what we're doing and how we're doing it that brings results. And so if you want to change any result in your life, examine your belief system around it. Examine your belief system around it. And, you know, it could even be something that I, someone here, I'm sure, is thinking, oh, that sounds great, Anna, but I work for a company. Uh, I don't have a lot of control over my salary. Well, you do. You have to examine whether or not this is where you want to be, whether this is the career you want to be in, whether this is the company you want to be in whether it's the right culture for you, whether it creates the right growth opportunity. Uh, some of you may decide that you have to make a move or a change because it's good where you are, but it's not great. It may not give you the best opportunities for advancement, for achievement, for opportunity, for financial opportunity, right? So you always have choices. We always have choices. I've said before, listen, you are not a tree. So if you don't like where you're rooted, pick yourself up and move, right? A tree may not be able to do that, but you can. So this morning was just a wake up call, I guess, for us to think about, are we really good or could we be great? And do we have all of the knowledge? Do we have the beliefs that support us to go from good to great? not just in our career, but in our relationships, in our health, in our wealth, in our, in our relationship with money? Are we looking at opportunities? Are we creating a magnet to us for opportunities to find us, right? So I'm gonna challenge you to think about what we've talked about here on Mojo this morning. I put a lot of questions in front of you. If I can help you more, let me know, reach out to me anytime. I'm happy to have a conversation with you. Um, and I trust that someone here found exactly what they needed to hear. And that's why I do this. If just one person lights up this morning and says, oh my gosh, I needed to hear that. And this is what I'm going to do about it. Then I have fulfilled my purpose here. But I know many of you here uh, find a lot of value in this and come back week after week. And I'm so grateful to you for that. Uh, we're closing in on three years of doing this. So it's so exciting. And uh, if there are different topics you want to hear about, or you want me to talk about or teach, send me a note. I'm happy to hear what's important to you and bring that content to you um, because I love this and I find this to be uh, one of the joys of my week. So thank you for giving me the platform to do that and for allowing me to come into your world for 30 minutes or so every Monday and be your coach. Um, and again, if I can help you more, reach out. And if you find this to be valuable, share it with your friends. Please, you know, let them be a member of the Facebook group, share the Zoom link with them, share the information so that they can also watch. Uh, and, you know, some of some of our uh, group members watch this later on the recording, which I think is great. And you'll find all of the recordings on my YouTube channel as well. So thanks again. You have a powerful day. Think about what we talked about this morning and uh, and and look to see how you can move from being good to great. All right. Have an awesome day, everyone. Take care.